Welcome, everyone, to the SI Media Podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Trainer. Thank you for listening. We have Richard Deitch, who covers media for The Athletic and has his own podcast on the show this week to do a full potpourri of sports media topics, cover everything that's in the news regarding sports media, uh, the John Heyman tweet situation, Adam Schefter, um, athletes dominating the podcast landscape, NFL scheduling, Al Michaels on Thursday Night Football, a lot of topics covered with Richard, who does an excellent job covering sports media. And then following Richard Salicata joins me, as always, as he does every week for Train of Thoughts. We read Apple reviews this week that have come in on the pod. If you're listening to this podcast right now, go to Apple, leave a review, five stars, write something. We will read it on the podcast in a Train of Thoughts segment. Before we get to Deitch and Train of Thoughts, just a reminder, if you've missed any recent episodes of the SI Media Podcast, check them out in the archives. Mike Tirico, the voice of Sunday Night Football on NBC, was on last week. Kevin Burkhart, the voice of Fox NFL Football, was on two weeks ago. Joe Buck, the voice of Monday Night Football, was on three weeks ago. We had Jim Nance on the pod recently, Chris Russo, Dan Lebetard. So in the archives, check them out, subscribe to the pod, leave a review. All right. Let's get to this week's show. Richard Deitch on all the latest sports media news, followed by Salakata and train of thoughts right here on the SI Media Podcast. All right, joining me now, breaking our string of uh, NFL lead play-by-play guys to have one of the, the stalwarts in sports media, the old host of this podcast from The Athletic and his own podcast, Richard Deitch. Richard? How are you? I'm good, Jim. You know, I was going to come on kayfabe. You try to do, be a character here, but instead I'll just be me. I, I will say this I in, all serious, in, all, in all seriousness. Mike Tirico, Kevin Burkhart, Joe Buck, Jim Nance, Kevin Clark, Richard Deitch. That's bad booking by you at the end there. And I'm not, trying to, I'm, not, I'm, not try, I'm not trying to be self-deprecating. I'm not trying to flagellation here. Yes, you are. But you have had major guests in the last five, six weeks. And I know we have talked about this off air. Booking is never easy. It's always a challenge, especially if you don't have a booker, but man, I mean, you have gone from multi, multi multi-million dollar people, very, very famous broadcasters. And it clearly, I am guessing that you were struggling desperately this week for a guest. And in that I'm happy to come on. One trying to keep the expectations low. I've spoiled the listeners. Now we got to throw a clunker in there. Right. No, and the truth is, as you know, I booked you a couple of weeks ago. Here's the deal. This is what the podcast is. The podcast is we have interviews with big players, like you just said, who we try to. And then I like to break it up every four or five weeks by having you or Marshan or Oran or Brian Curtis on to get, do the state of sports media. So you guys are always going to be staples on this podcast as long as you know I'm here. And when we do the interviews mainly, but we like to mix in a little what's going on in sports media. So who who better <laughs> than you? No, I respect that. And obviously, if there's a similarity in all of these podcasts, I would say the similarity is probably closest to me and you uh, in, the, in that kind of format. I think we we certainly have different guests, but in terms of not doing a – like straight, here's the state of sports media this week, the way that Marsha and Oren, as, as a general rule, do. And Brian Curtis does, although he extends it beyond sports media. So I think in terms of all the people who are doing this, um, we're probably the closest. You know, John Lewis at Sports Media Watch is is, is viewership-oriented. If I'm missing anybody, my apologies. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm, listen, happy to do it. And, uh, and uh, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot, you know, this month has been incredible. When it comes to television, I know you're not the biggest soccer guy, but it's been it's been an incredible month. Well, OK, so let's start there. I'm not a soccer guy at all, but this is what I know just as someone who follows sports media. I, I haven't watched the World Cup, but I do know that Fox has gotten, from what I can tell, very good ratings. I don't know if they're great, but they seem like they're very good. But everything I've seen from media people is that they hate Fox's coverage. So as someone who's not paying attention, can you give me a little summation of what's going on there? Should I give you a little Brian curse? I think that's right, Jimmy. Um, the uh, That's pretty close to, to, to accurate to me. Um, viewership has been very good in relation to where this tournament is. You know, it's in Qatar, so it's eight hours ahead. 
So you're never going to get NFL viewership, right? Because, you know, it's just it, like games are on at 5 in the morning Eastern time, 10 in the morning Eastern time, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. But they've they've beaten 2018 by a lot. Um, some of that's out of home viewing for sure. But they're up over the last World Cup in Russia. They've gotten very good viewership, Jimmy, surprisingly, for some games that have nothing to do with the U.S. I think that's always a good sign in terms of, you know, soccer's growth or world soccer's growth. Mm-hmm. They did very, very well when it came to the U.S.-England game. They did well when it came to the U.S.-Netherlands game. You know, they're drawing – they're drawing like big college football viewership numbers, like a little bit over. I you know I don't have it in front of me, but like, you know, when you're drawing like 15, 16, 17 million, like combined, like that's a big number for soccer. Um, you know, they, they, you start getting into the NFL conversation, at least low level NFL. So I think they have to be very, very pleased with viewership. When it comes to the coverage, this is this is just my opinion. I mean, I've written this, I'll probably write it again. I'm sure I'll have a podcast on it as we conclude with the World Cup. I happen to think Fox's game broadcasting is pretty good. The addition of Ian Dark, I think, was phenomenal. It brings you essentially a number one broadcaster into your into your um, uh, you know your roster, and he's like number three or number four during the World Cup. So that just makes you have really good depth. Derek Ray is a fantastic broadcaster. John Strong to me has gotten better. Um, Stu Holden is their number one analyst. I think he's gotten better. So the game broadcasting is pretty good. They've They've lived up to their promise when it comes to showing national anthems, showing walkouts. And in general, I think that has been good. Some will disagree. That's my take. Where they've gotten crushed, Jimmy, and rightly so, is the studio. I I have never seen a world, at least in terms of me covering uh, sports media, I've never seen a World Cup rights holder been crushed more than Fox has when it comes to this World Cup. People do not like the studio. They think it's dumbed down. Um they don't particularly like, I think, many of the specific studio analysts who are there. I would argue that you never learn anything about the tactics of other teams. It's very Americanized, which is okay if you would, I think, extend that beyond the U.S. national team. So in terms of someone who loves soccer and reads a lot about soccer and follows the people who really um, who are really into the sport in terms of globally – they, they've really – I'm just going to be blunt. They've really hated Fox. They have not liked the coverage. The problem is they're stuck with them. Fox has this right. four years from now. Um, I don't know when the – you know, I don't know when the bid is going to open up again. FIFA didn't open up the 2026 bid to other – you know, to the ESPNs of the world. So I, I, I hate to say it to viewers. You're just kind of stuck. You just have to hope Fox improves on its coverage. And then lastly, I know I've gone long a little bit and we haven't even gotten into this, Jimmy. They punted on everything when it came to the – um, human rights issues in Qatar. They literally like decided not even to touch it. But is that and surprising? Me, no, not surprising at all. They said oh, okay. they wouldn't. So in that sense, they were honest about it. But yeah, like it's Fox. I'm not going to expect them to. It's just an. Ad- I mean, to me, like not mentioning it at all is just an incredible abdication. I, I think you should just, even if you're going to not mention it, you should give it sort of some kind of surface mention. Um, and then others, you know, they're they're sponsored by Qatari Airlines. They're really, really in bed with the Qataris in this World Cup. And so you got to hold your nose a little bit and watch it, even though it's not, you know, it's not a great experience, certainly when it comes to the studio. All right. Well, I, it's a good summation. I Thanks. appreciate it. Um, we're taping this hot on the heels <laughs> of John Heyman saying Arson Judge was going, to re- was going to sign with the Giants. Yeah. I mean – you know that I, I consider you one of the pioneers of Twitter, <laughs> even though you took a break. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the the fuck up comes from the, the desire to be first on social media? Or is there another reason why this would go so bad and so wrong? So now you're you're talking more about the fact that he didn't sign with the Giants, not not the autocorrect, right? Or are you talking right. both? Okay, no, like, no, that he did, that he didn't sign with the Giants. Yeah, it's like the the auto. Well, let's just do the autocorrect first. Like sometimes, like autocorrect, like becomes one of the more famous Twitter things, right? If if the autocorrect turns out to be like just like a, a weird or unexpected word. So in this case, right. arson is like funny. Arson right. itself is obviously not funny, but arson judge is funny. Right. And you're seeing, you know, you're seeing all the famous like uh, um, 
G- GIFs and memes that are out there. So, you know, he gets burned on that. And that's just, you know, that's just getting unlucky, I guess, on autocorrect. Well, the autocorrect to me is telling because it makes me think it's speed that right? he was pounding that phone so hard with his fingers Correct. because he was terrified of Jeff Passan or Buster Olney or Kevin Rosenthal yeah. beating him to the story that he, you know, spit out arson judge <laughs> and didn't care because he's terrified of those other people beating him. Arson judge. I mean, I, I, I apologize for laughing. It just it literally will last for 40 years. It's oh, just that's like it. you, will, you will you will basically like know that name for yes. forever. Listen, and it's a bad fuck up. Like, you know, no, all of us have made mistakes. You just when you make that kind of mistake, it's bad. It's it's a, it's the most prominent player in the sport. It's one of the most famous teams when it comes to the Yankees in professional sports. And you had the guy going to the team where he didn't end up going to. Like, it's bad. So the undoubtedly it is about speed. All of us obviously, I shouldn't say all of us, but you know, it's a competitive business and yeah, I have no doubt that Heyman wants to be um, Joel Sherman. Well, not Joel Sherman because he's his partner. But, yeah, John Morosi, Ken Rosenthal. I mean, these guys all get along, actually. The baseball guys are pretty good about giving credit. But they're all competitive, too. They want to be first. And that's a bad one. Um, and it, what's bad about it is yeah. the only person who would care about him being first is maybe – I mean, I don't even know. I'm like, not even so sure Heyman, his bosses do. Do you? Wait, think, let like, me that, finish that the thought. Let me finish. Sorry. Let me yeah, finish the thought. I don't even know. So Heyman works, I think, for MLB Network and the Post. Right. Okay. So maybe the people who pay his salary there want him to be first. But in terms of sports fans and people on Twitter, nobody cares. Like, do you? Uh, we're taping this shortly after Judge signed with the Yankees. Do you know who right. broke the story? I don't know. I rest my case. I rest yeah. my case. It's like nobody yeah, but, cares. But I'm curious. Do you know who it is, though? I'm actually curious. I don't either. Yeah, I don't because know. Because what happens know. is someone may break it, but then 20 writers all at the same time exactly. say, I'm hearing confirmed, accurate, first, who had it. You know, it's like, but nobody cares. It's strictly a Twitter thing. I think, well, I, I think the I think the writers care, obviously. It's a bit of a competition among them, and I get it. Trust me, I'm not taking myself away. You know, I would, I would have loved to have... Uh, beating Marshand on uh, Al Michaels going to Amazon. But the, the the weird thing about this one, Jimmy, and both of we've talked about this many times, is uh, uh, Heyman's not getting paid by Twitter, right? It, he, it, there's, no, he's not, there's no monetization for Heyman unless, like, the New York Post hired him because he has the reputation of being first or having, like, a ton of Twitter followers, which is possible. But you're totally correct in that, like, Two minutes after the transaction happens, nobody remembers who broke the transaction. It has no real meaning. The only way you really get fucked is if you're wrong, and people remember that now. Well, because let me just – I want to just piggyback off one thing you said because if you think about it logically, what this system should be is – okay, let's say John Heyman thinks Aaron Judge signed with the Giants. He was wrong, but at that time when he tweeted, that's what he thought. So logically what he should do is write a paragraph or two for NewYorkPost.com. Right. That Aaron Judge is signed with the Giants and the post should – because that's how you that, that's how you monetize. Yes. But instead, it goes on Twitter where nobody gains anything from it. Now, obviously, that would have been bad because he was wrong, but I'm just using that as the yes. example. Yeah, no, true. And, you know, this is where, again, you know, you have editors who can save you, you know, because you can – you have somebody in the back before you publish that on NewYorkPost.com who says, hey, you sure about this? Like, how should we phrase the wording of it? Um, I don't remember the – did, I, you, you can remind me. Did Heyman say he signed, or was it more like he's leaning? I, like, was I it believe, a definitive? I be I believe the exact wording of the tweet was: "Arson Judge appears to be headed to the Giants." Okay, well, appears is a little bit of a couch, right. so you, you saved right. a little bit on that. Um, you know, listen, I, 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 and I, I put myself on here, although I feel like I'm much better now in 2022 than I was certainly in like you know 2015 or 16. In many ways, like the addiction of Twitter like right. prompts you to like hit that drug, right. To like get another hit. And there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when you get out of boys or congratulations on Twitter, it's a big ego boost, right? So if you right. are the person who breaks the Aaron judge story, you broke the biggest story off season story in baseball. Uh, like we would agree, right? That's, I don't yeah. think there's a bigger signing. So I get the, I get the desire to get that out there, but Man, like I, I, looking at it from ten thousand feet below, I would rather be last than make that kind of mistake. Like to me, what would be what would be awful is to be known as the person who fucked that up. 
right. there are some reporters out there, right, who have a reputation now of like they get mocked almost because people, the baseball fan doesn't really believe. And I'm not saying this is Heyman, but but right. sports fans don't believe when a certain person sometimes breaks something because that person's been wrong before. Right. And I, and I do think Heyman could have been saved a little teeny tiny bit. If judge would have eventually signed with the giants. Yeah. No, the I, think news he, comes I, out I don't think Wednesday anybody would have. Yeah. I don't think anybody would have actually, I don't think he would have, there'd be no issue, right? Because people might laugh at the arson part, but he would have been right. And then people would have just remembered. I think that, Oh yeah. Heyman was the guy who said that, um, that judge signed with the, with the Giants, you know the the thing about that in that, tra- I, I mean, again, you could not. I, I'm very honest here with the audience. You could not pay me any amount of money to be Schefter, Woj, Heyman, or those guys. It, it seems like a miserable life to be that connected to your phone, to be that indebted to agents, to like sort of live that. Like ten million dollars to me is not is not worth it. But within that framework, Jimmy, like I think these guys, like I think they're so. I think a lot of their identity is tied up, right, in the transaction yeah. breaking, that it must be hard not to, 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 to try to win all of those. And um, the reality is, you're, you know, you're. I'm not saying an agent gave Heyman bad info, but you're not going to be right on everything. And so I'd rather be, I'd rather have never break any of those stories, and not never be as wrong as he was on the judge one, but. Long term, I don't think it impacts anything. I think we've seen with ESPN and Schefter and others, like these organizations don't seem to care, right? And I, well, by the way, yes. I'm not putting what I'm not putting what Schefter has done to what Heyman right. did here. I'm right. just saying, like, it, it, as long as the organization paying you a shitload of money doesn't care, there's like no ramifications. Right. Here. Well, well you, I definitely want to get into that with Schefter. I'll just say this last thing about the Heyman situation. I do think. I mean, listen. Obviously, I, I wrote this in my column on Wednesday. Like the level of screw up matters if if Heyman, does it though well if Heyman gets the you reputationally know, maybe but not what happens if your employer doesn't care uh no no what i'm saying is this if Heyman would have got jameson tyone wrong it's a lot different than getting aaron judge wrong 100 uh, percent agree and i also think who makes the mistake matters now i'm not gonna ask you to comment on it because that, that's not fair to you but i do think if this was rosenthal who made this mistake or, or passing yeah the vitriol would not be as bad, but Heyman does I, I, not seem liked by a lot of people out there. Yeah, I agree. No, world. I'm happy to comment. Look, first of all, I, I've always had a good relationship with John Heyman. Uh, I, when he worked for us at Sports Illustrated, uh, you know, I didn't deal with him a lot, but when I dealt with him, I, I, I liked, uh, you know, it, I had no issues with him. Again, I didn't work with him on any kind of daily basis. I would agree with you, though, that it does seem like at least that we're going to use like the Twitter universe, Jimmy, as a um, as sort of our, um, you, you know, as we're sort of basing it on. It seems like Rosenthal pass in are are more well liked i i don't know if it's uh um i don't know why that is uh right. i i I, may, oh. I, I I can only guess that maybe um you know rosenthal is pretty mild mannered a uh, passing can be i guess it'll have a little bit of an edge i i don't know why that is may, i'd have to ask a base i'm not as into the baseball weeds as i am on some other sports so I would think a hardcore baseball person probably would be able to tell me that. What was the thing Passon got in trouble for a few months ago? I don't even remember now. Oh, yeah. He just was going sh- back and forth with Ben Verlander, and then he, he, he oh, made like a blowjob job. get on your knees right? or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, problem yeah. there is Disney's yeah. not going to like, like yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of reference. Yeah. 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 Um, that probably made people like Passon even more. Um, yeah, I think it was in reference. I think yeah. I forgot what it was, but it was in reference to Ot- somehow Otani was part right, of right. that. I don't right, know right, exactly. Right. It was, yeah, it was get on your knees. Someone else. Yeah. And who got in trouble like this week? Because they said about eat dicks. Someone Somebody got in trouble said, like last week for saying that in a tweet. If you work for Disney, that's going to be. A it, was a player. it was oh, a was? player. It was a player. Oh, that, yeah. It's, I didn't. I don't know who that is, but I'm saying. As a general it was a player there. that everyone. Oh, Lamar Jackson. That's who it was. Lamar Jackson. Oh, he got the Ravens were bothered by that that language. I, I think I think um, eat dicks is 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 a derogatory comment. In the it, it's it's now that's now thought of as an anti gay comment. No, I know I understand I that. I, I, right, I mean, so that's why he apologized. Not, I get it. Like that's not a right. great play for a quarterback to tweet. But I didn't know if he was. I didn't know if that was in relation to like the NFL find him or he was fighting with a reporter. 
was about I mean, it. if you're Lamar ja- like I, I, I mean again I don't want to be so cavalier because like I don't know what it would be like to be a star quarterback Lamar Jackson and have all my social media feeds just seemingly endlessly all day just a you know a series of miserable people attacking you but there's just never yeah. upside right like right. you 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 if you are that level of athletic fame your response becomes a story. It doesn't even matter what someone said to you often beforehand, right? The lesson here is between Jeff Passan saying get on your knees and Lamar Jackson saying eat dicks, don't tweet about the penis in a derogatory manner and you won't get in trouble, but people can't seem to do that, so they get in trouble. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I mean, I never thought we'd go down this road on a podcast, but I think that's generally speaking very good advice. Thank you. All right, now the Schefter thing, here's my issue with, so the Schefter, uh, well, let me start with this. What did you make of Schefter's ESPN.com story on Deshaun Watson is showing progress in treatment? Yeah, awful. I, I don't, I, I again, like, I, I I don't, I haven't really understand some of the decisions Schefter has made in the last couple of years. Let me say, as somebody who has always had a very good relationship with him in my position, I think he's done a lot of good work. I am not so quick as others are to sort of blast him, but there have been some things he has done, Jimmy, that are just indefensible. Like I, 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 he comes off or had, let me put it this way in the last couple of years, he has come off way too much of carrying water for agents uh, or like, it seems like to me, you know, like regarding uh, an agent's particular clients and has been so tone deaf, it feels like, to the larger issues at hand, often very, very serious issues, you know, sex- sexual Cook. harassment, sexual violence. Right. I, 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 I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm not even trying to cop out on my answer. I'm just befuddled by the tone deafness. Like, well, I, seems, I have a theory see, on I'll, that. My last one on this. It seems sometimes yeah. that Schefter is so into the transactional nature of his job that he forgets about the humanity of – what he's tweeting about because there are people behind this stuff. So, well, that's the other I, thing you can't too. Defend. I, I mean, the, the, right. the short answer is you, a lot of the things he has done lately, you cannot defend. It's just, and you, unbelievable. And, you made, and you made one of the points I've, I've tried to make um, about this in that he's a transactional guy. His job is this guy's hurt. This coach is getting fired. This guy's signing here. And then he comes in with the Deshaun Watson story. It seems so out of left field that he would be the one writing that story. And I do think um, the, the, what I find interesting about Schefter constantly having these issues is that it's never as big as a story as if someone else who doesn't work at ESPN, if, if, someone else, if someone outside of ESPN did what he did, they'd get blasted so much more because no one at ESPN is going to call out Schefter. So if someone from Fox Sports or Bleacher Report or SI or The Athletic writes that story, all the ESPN people are going to trash that writer. Whereas when Schefter does it, they have to sit it out and then he ends up getting even more of a free pass than he gets just because he's ESPN's top guy. Well, so a couple things on that. Um, yeah, I mean, the Deshaun Watson story was really bad just in that, like, the, you know, the... What the, made him look like a fool anonymous- Deshaun Watson doesn't admit he did anything, and then... Yeah, Chester's I mean, the, 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 the sort of yeah. anonymity of, of him giving, quote-unquote, sources, right. like, in relation to what he is saying about... Um, you know Watson's progress when he, when Watson himself is not saying anything when Watson himself has never come out and formally apologized it's just it's pretty unseemly um yeah. in terms of the past Jimmy I don't think Schefter gets a pass in the quote unquote court of public opinion but and this is an important but there he is on the highest of high lifts of front facing talent who has juice and power and leverage at ESPN. I he mean, has the Jordan rules. He's in the Stephen A. Smith stratosphere. Yeah, he has the and Jordan so rules. I, I, I don't know. I don't think he will ever do anything where it would put him in really bad stead with ESPN management. I mean, they are paying right. him whatever it is, nine, ten million dollars a year. Um and he is an excellent newsbreaker, unquestionably so. And so I think they have clearly made a decision that they are willing to to deal with the fallout of some of this stuff in turn for Adam Schefter's like access, right, and contact. So the ESPN has told you, just to be blunt, they don't care. Right. Um, so where the net result of all this is, yeah, he takes a hit like in the court of NFL public opinion and on Twitter, 
but that's it, right? I, I, I don't think anything else changes from it. And I'm not saying that's a good, that's a good um, summation. I just think that's the reality of it. Like now, right. you are a hundred percent right. If that is being done by the um, ESPN's beat reporter of the Texans, right, or 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 um, or Dolphins, that person is in major trouble. Like that, I don't, I don't know if that person's getting right. like suspended without pay, but that person's probably getting pulled from their job for a little bit after their ESPN boss talked to them. So that's the difference. You are right. Like he has, you know, I don't, I can't tell you how many people at ESPN who are sort of front facing people have Jordan rules, but he's one, and Stephen A is one, and right. Aikman and Buck are one. It's not Woj. the longest list. Yeah, Woj, but but there are, you know, there's like probably ten Herb Street. People who are paid a ton of money right. and people who have longstanding relationships with management, they're treated differently. Quite, By the way, in the exact same manner that when me and you worked at SI and Rick Riley was there, the rules were different for Rick Riley than they were for Jimmy right. Train and Richard Teich. Right. 100%. Um, the, the, the Schefter Mr. Editor thing, that was horrible. Yeah. That was the one that really. I think uh, although I think the ones involved, people. I think the Dobbin Cook ones and stuff like that are worse than Mr. Editor. But here's my issue with that. One's a journalistic sin, right? The other's just like horrific, like in terms of humanity. I also think when you're dealing with the players like that, I think Vikings fans and and and, FL, and his fantasy owners, they really they're not going to get worked up over it. Whereas the Mr. Editor thing, everyone was like, "What is this?" How do you feel about? I mean, I don't really want to continue going to Schefter thing, but to like, yeah, do you? Do, um, I mean, this maybe is more of like sort of like for like like a hardcore journalism seminar. But do you have any issues with him giving significant gifts to his the people who are his sources and give him information? That's something, as you know, both of us at Sports Illustrated, we probably would be fired for that. Uh, I, right. I guess we I guess we would never do it unless we told our employer. But as a general rule, the I mean, the, the, the old one at SI used to be like you could not accept a gift more than. It was either fifty or hundred bucks. Like it just like you, you wouldn't even ever go down that road. I, you know, I one hundred percent get where you're coming from with that question, and I understand that the whole. But I don't. If I'm gonna like just try to think about the reality of the situation, I don't think the gift is impact. Like, I think people use him to get information out there. I don't think the gift. You know, what, you're, what you're is he talking about? The, yeah, of Jack Daniels. I don't think that's going to affect right. much. I think he's protecting people. Well, I shouldn't say he. I think all writers protect people who are sources. I'm not sure the gifting is, you know, that much of an issue. So the you're not going to be sent, you're not you're not sending uh, you're not sending uh, some uh, some uh, t- two dozen bagels from your favorite bagel store on Long Island to Troy Aikman this week is what you're saying. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. Right. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the podcast on a completely different path right now. Yeah, We're gonna go on a completely because you had mentioned about if it was another writer, they'd be on suspension. Maybe. You know, I, maybe. Said, I said it could, they could be. I don't know for and sure. When you said that, it triggered something in my brain, and it wasn't on my list of topics, but you would be the perfect person to discuss this uh, with because you right. you are into media, and this is totally Not out of left field. as much as I used to be, but yes. So I'm going to throw this. Why are those two anchors from GMA3, Amy <laughs> Roback and TJ Holmes, getting suspended and pulled off the air because they're having relations? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Let them still do their show. No one's affected I, by by that. Yeah, he's not a power dynamic there. He's not the boss. She's not the boss. So why well, can't they? So I, I mean, if we're if you if you, I guess the, you know, those morning shows are just ridiculous, as you know. Like they're always been like a, uh, like a funnel of information to the page sixes of the world. I mean, you know, we look. You know, how, like both of us are New Yorkers. Like over the years, how many times has the New York Post like literally done a cover on something that involved, uh. Kelly Ripa, Michael Strahan, you know what I'm saying? Like literally like Lauer, you know, all that shit that's gone down. Right. Um, I guess if I'm going to answer this one, I think if you are having a relationship at work, you have to let HR know. So I'd be curious to see if they let HR know or not. But in terms of, yes, consenting adults um, having a relationship or quite frankly, consenting adults even having an affair. I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't know if they should be pulled. I feel like they're being pulled because um, they don't want to. The, they, that ABC doesn't want to be on the cover of the Post out, right. every day. Yeah, right. They don't, that's, want, don't you think they're on the they, cover of the Post every day this week? That's why I think they got pulled. Is they just want to stop the story? Don't you? Did agree? you see the Did you see the Post cover that said "Moaning News"? 
<laughs> no, that's funny, but no, <laughs> I did not. Not that I, I was, you know. I, I, I do think what's a little to, rough, yeah. and yes, I'm sorry, I'm consumed with this story. Is they they have all these pictures out there of them two with her husband at the time, Andrew oh, Shue from Melrose yeah, Place, and right. they're all buddy buddy hugging, and that one gives you a little. Ooh, ooh, that's a Let little. Let me tell crazy. you this. I, I mean, this is I, in many ways you sort of see that story, and you're like, man, am I happy I'm not famous? The Daily Mail. They literally sent somebody to like follow them into the woods, right into their. Which is amazing because who would have thought all these people would care about Amy Roback and T.J. Holmes? Like I didn't even know. I've heard of her. I never heard of him before. I don't. I've never watched the show. I don't know what. Yeah, I think people. again, it's. Um, I I think the the me and you probably have no. I shouldn't say no. We probably do not have a good sense of just how the people who are into morning television, how into the people on morning television they are. You know what I mean? Like they are so into um which is all the, the more li- reason to the leave them on because those- it, it, you would have gotten more ratings if they were on. I know. You're they're into the lives of those anchors I think because yeah. they because the people on those shows bring their lives into the show, right? Right. Isn't that part of sort of like if you're if you're a morning show person isn't part of like like they make the morning show like your family and then they right. bring in their own family so that you feel like that you're um Yeah, I don't know. Part of yeah, part of- I, I mean I I you are not wrong in the sense that like this is we're not dealing with like Katie Couric level fame here, right? Right. But yet the um well, I mean listen, the right. there's no going, Matt Lauer locked the post, in the door situation. Yeah, yeah the I mean, post is going to roll with this, but I'm I am kind of surprised that just like I mean it's one of the biggest web stories going on now. Like if you right. Google those two names, you'd see a million pieces on it. So, yeah. Well, and that, my thing throughout the week has just been like, I can't believe like, what would the post do if there were, if these, the people involved in the story were bigger names that America cared about? Like, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I, I just, I mean, it, it sucks to say, but like, you do know this, like the reality of like good looking people having affairs or having yeah, yeah. sex. Oh, we'll sure. Always sex, sell, yeah. We'll always sell, yeah. pa- we'll yeah. always sell papers. Or, what or, is your or, give or me? Patriots. What is your morning sports media consumption? Like, do you watch or listen to anything in the morning? What's the Richard Deitch? Like, for, I know for me, I listen to Howard Monday through Wednesday. I listen to Boomer and Geo on WFAN Thursdays and Fridays. A little bit of then I mix in Good Morning Football, but they replay that at ten, so I can watch it at seven or ten. Like, those are my three things in the morning. What is the Richard Deitch morning? Yeah, sports so media for me, it's a bit of a it's a different it's a different mix. Obviously, just because you have more kids too, so you might have to throw yeah, in a kids. little Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah. Well, tr- yeah, yeah, more honestly, the mornings for us it's the NCAA tournament. You're just trying to survive in advance. To be very right. honest, right. Um, Mine is a combination of I want to get updated on what happened in Toronto sports, just given because I live here. So I listen to uh, the local stations here. Uh, my um, old colleague, Bob McC- McCowan, does a podcast. And so I'll listen to his podcast uh, quickly in the morning. But then also, Jenny, because as both of us are, I'm a huge fan, as you know, of uh, wrestling podcasts. So I might listen to uh, one of Conrad Thompson's podcasts. I might listen to Cornette. So it's like kind of a mix. My morning is a mix. After the – after uh, we're done with the kids. I usually I'll take a walk or a jog or something like that. So that's when I'm trying to um, do uh, podcasts or uh, catch up in the morning. I, I I usually do not. I mean, I'm, hopefully, you know, the athletics not going to fire me for saying this. I'm not really catching up on American sports until like early afternoon, later in the day. Like that's usually when I'll figure out. Like, how long right, does so- it take you to catch up on the Raptors? Uh, depends. Oh, you do the hockey too, I guess. Yeah, the Maple Leafs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I want to maintain like it, what, as long as I'm living up here, like a like a pretty good knowledge of the uh, local sports teams. But this is where Twitter, you know, so even, wait in a the, second. even in the You're- Musk Hellscape world, is good because like literally, you just go on your feed, you'll find out like arson. Like you, how quickly could you have found out about arson judge? Like literally two minutes after Heyman posted it, right? So you're not going right. to miss anything, right? Well, I was going to say, you're there consuming Toronto sports and wrestling podcasts. Shout out right. Conrad Thompson, something to wrestle with. Yeah. And then what Check about, your, what about like are you supposed to be following sports media? Yeah, of course, Jimmy. There's, a, there's enough time in the day yeah. to do it all. You know, I yeah. mean, it's not like, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm reading sports business uh, journal. I'm, I'm seeing what. Uh, Shout out John O'Ran. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, John O'Ran, by the way, uh, it, it, there's a guy. Like who I had on my podcast a million times, like back in the day. Now he's blown up as a massive podcast figure. 
I feel like he's forgotten about me. Forgotten about the little people on his way to uh, <laughs> to start him. Uh, he comes yeah, on my so, podcast yeah. regularly, so I don't. Well, I think that's sport, he loves sports. O Ran has always loved Sports Illustrated. He's like he's an old school guy, and that 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 name means something to him, which yeah. which which I respect. Um, but no, I mean Jimmy, honestly, you read sport, Sports Business Journal is phenomenal. Like th- if there was one, pl- if you ask me, of all the publications I either subscribe to or have. Like as long as I'm working, as long as I'm still writing about sports media, what's the most invaluable one? It's that one. Like that would be the one I would be the hardest to give up. So once you read that and sort of just play around in the web a little bit, I feel like you're pretty updated on what's happening. Also, you know, I'm talking to people, you know, I regularly talk to people within the industry on a daily basis. So I, you know, you, you feel connected. Also, like lastly, like we're, it's not like we're, we're writing about nuclear fission here. I, right. like, you know, you can catch up. Right. Well, that's the other thing about like the Heyman thing. There's a, there is a part of me that was like, okay, like this really is not that important in the grand scheme of the no, world. No, but I mean, there was an election again, in Georgia the other day. I mean, uh, arson judge is funny, but it doesn't mean it has no yeah. impact in the larger scale of life. Right. But that's why I do think your reputation, how you treat people, what people like that, that's what ends 100%. up coming into play. Yeah. You, I bet you, you must've been one of the thousands of people just drooling and fawning over the Andrew Luck story this week on you. Well, I have not we, we, even read it. What? Yeah. I know Wickersham wrote it. I'll eventually get to it, but I, I have like it. That's like your wheelhouse. Seth Wickersham, Andrew Luck, long feature. That's like a Richard Deitch special. What's going on with you? I'll eventually read it, but it's, you know, you, you, you got to prioritize. I, this I is think shocking. Shocking. Andrew, Andrew Luck's an interesting figure, but he's, I find, there's a lot more athletes I find far more, um, Far more interesting. Also, Jimmy, I mean, again, this I think this says something about me is I find myself more interested in things far away from sports and sports media. This to me feels like well, that's why I think I'm closer to the end than the beginning. I don't, don't say that because then I'm not, not going to have to have. I can't have you on. I'm not going to be following. Mushnick. I'm not going that deep into the into the and I, I you will not see me writing sports media at, at his age. There's no chance. Zero. That's going to be the clip I pull from this. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it, it'll be far before it. I, I mean, it, you, you know, seem not defeated, to get, not to, Richard. Not to get ex- what's what's not going to get, on? You seem defeated. No, I'm not defeated. I just like I think you know. I'm. I feel like I'm coming to. I'm closer to the end of this chapter for me professionally than the beginning. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm walking away from the athletic or anything like that. I'm just saying like, you know, I have other interests and and there's probably a couple of things I would like to do before I wrap this all up. And I do think that. And I saw this in Sports Illustrated too. I think there's a shelf life on writing about a certain topic that everybody hits, and I'm closer to that right. end than the beginning by a lot. Well, then it's good you have a podcast because then you have to. Yeah, write. yeah, yeah. I mean, if honestly, if that both of us enjoy the podcast, even though it's a lot of work, if I can make that a full time job where I would pay my bills, I would do it in a second. That's just that's both of us. Unfortunately, we what we talk about is niche. So even if you can make a little bit of money. Can't really. I mean, I shouldn't say. I don't know what Brian Curtis makes in the podcast. I should be sort of, you know. Yeah, let's not talk about people's salaries. I'm, I'm not. No, no, no. That. I'm not. No, Brian. Brian's paid to be not just do the podcast. He has other responsibilities. The ringer. What I'm saying is, I don't know if what we do, you could ever get to the download numbers where it could become a legit, you know, six figure job on a annual basis. I think you would not to get so deep in the woods on podcasting, but. You know, I think you would need close to hundred thousand downloads, maybe a little less per episode. And I, what I just don't know is, I don't know if there's enough people combined who would, li- even if all of us didn't do it. If let's just say there was one, I don't know if I don't know if a one singular sports media podcast would get a hundred thousand listeners every episode. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's my take. Yeah, I think you, you worry way too much. I don't think about it in those terms. Like, well, you should. I for, yeah, I don't. Um, it's you. You. You should be. I mean, I know you don't want to go into this, but like, you should be getting. You should have a. You should be getting money from Sports Illustrated on any kind of revenue you bring in for this podcast. You know how I feel about that. Well, I'm and sure if for this thing, episode, if, the if, revenue if, is very high. Yeah. And if there's one thing I wish I had done when I started this one, was if I understood the economics of it better. I would have tried, like Peter King, tip my hat to him, tried to create one of these deals where you got money for the podcast in addition to your salary as an employee. He was the only one of us, I believe, back in the day who was able to pull that off because, of course, he was Peter King. Anyway, I know you don't want to go down this road. Yeah. 
Although well, I think the listeners of, would find it fascinating, but go ahead. I don't think they care. They want to hear us opine on sports media. I want to hear, what do you make, if, if you want to talk about podcasts, what do you make of the trend of all of these podcasts now hosted by current athletes who are in season? And a lot of them are good. I think it's smart. I mean, I, you know, I got to tip my hat to Ka- Colin Coward on on his volume. Getting Dream on Green was a massive coup. I mean, that's a guy. Who, Is he still doing that podcast? I haven't seen anything about it. In maybe weeks. if he hasn't, then I apologize. I don't know. He I, might be. I'm just I saying. I know he was usually... doing the volume. I don't listen to it on any kind of weekly basis. Yeah, yeah. But like, I thought that was a really good, um, a really good hire because obviously he's a pretty controversial figure. I think, I think Jimmy athletes have sort of understood now that. They don't need the middle man, the middle woman, right? They can they can go straight to distribute their content and what they're doing. And I think you will only see more people doing this. Am I correct that the Kelsey brothers like now have a podcast? And isn't that like a top ten podcast already? I would say it's like top two. Okay, so there you go. Perfect and it's phenomenal. I've yeah, I have not it heard it. It's, many good. T- it's very good. Okay, so there you go. Because, the, because Jason Kelsey is really, really funny. Right. And what I find interesting about it is and, uh, you know, I shouldn't admit this because it makes me look stupid and, and sort of like, you know, I almost sort of stereotype the athletes in that I'm always surprised when I see the work they're putting in and the, and the things should, they're covering yeah, in the don't topics. Don't stereotype. That's but bad they, on your part. No, I know. I agree. But like, because there were times in the beginning when I watched it, I'd be like, I can't believe like the work and the knowledge and the, like, they're doing a really great job of with the topics. And if you're a current athlete, you don't need to be doing that. Like you got way bigger fish to fry. So I give them a lot of credit. You know, JJ Reddick, not a current player, but, but a really when good you example. see what he's doing with the podcast, it's tremendous. It's not even just a podcast now. These guys have media companies. You know, I just right. saw today as we're taping this, Sue Bird and Megan Rapino announced their podcast company. So when you have status, access, standing, money, like you could create one of these production companies and who knows the value of it Peyton and Eli man that Omaha productions is worth multiple millions now right like one day if they decide to sell that they're that's going to be a hundred million dollar company they're going to sell and so you know I know Reddick I, I wish I remembered it but Reddick Reddick and Tommy Alter have a production is it called the old man whatever the pro- old man and the three Whatever it is, it's not just a podcast. Like it's a production company, it's yeah. a media company. Yeah. And so you're seeing, to me, all you're seeing a lot of these athletes now forming this. I think this is just the beginning. Um, do I think that means like, like the media will be shut out? No, I think as long as like the leagues continue to credential people, you'll still get access. But like, there's a lot of power if you like, you know, take athlete X. Like, I'll just use a football player, okay? Do you know how incredible it would be if you had like Patrick Mahomes uh, literally after the Chiefs game, like just go into a podcast studio and do like a 15 minute podcast? It'd be, one, it'd be like one of the number one podcasts. In the well, country. you have that now in, in, in a lot of ways. Like Josh Allen appears on Kyle Brandt's show. Kyle Brandt like has a show. Immediately after the game? No, no. He does it on Tuesdays with Kyle. Okay. So he's on Kyle. It's called Kyle Brandt's Basement. So Josh Allen appears yeah, there. That's a great get. Love Josh Allen. Um, there's a there's a burrow I, th- I think joe burrow does a weekly spot but that's we've seen that before i'm talking about the athlete himself or herself literally right. after the game and after whatever commitments they have like right. doing an episode like that real time kind of take me in would be massively successful isn't that well, what tom, Draymond did in the playoffs tom brady tom brady tweeted the video of him saying let's fucking go like five seconds after the game the game ended on monday night brady is incredibly he's not conscientious that, about his social media but he's Do not agree? doing it he has a company doing i know it. but you, you agree that he is incredibly conscientious about his social media and how he looks i think the media. company he hired is tremendous that's yeah. what i think now, i think he, I, think you, he does a little I know bit it's not it. your show i mean i know it's not my show but let me ask you this sure you had to guess today december yep. 7th 2022 yep you think Brady eventually makes the Fox booth? I do. And I, I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because for some reason, I mean, you're helping me do a little publicity for this pod because Joe Buck came on here three weeks ago and said, there are Fox people who have told him they don't know if Brady will ever do a game for them. And <laughs> that ended up getting picked up everywhere. And I didn't yeah. even, I, when Joe said quote. it, it didn't really phase me. Um, I thought throughout the NFL season, 100%. He was going to retire after this year because he looked miserable. Yeah, Obviously, he's going so through the, the personal stuff. And then we'll go to the Fox booth next year. He, now, I, I guess he'll probably play next year. Based I think on he's going to play next year, too. I agree. I, I think he's going to go into the booth when he retires, whether it's next year, the year after, year after, simply for one reason. 
well, 375 million reasons. He's like, you have to be insane to walk away from that money. I know, although that's and as you know, I told, that, that's a ten-year commitment to get the whole deal. It's thirty-seven, well, whatever, this, for one, right? I've said this on the pod. I may have, it may have been last week with Tariko, maybe it was a joke. Tom Brady seems like a guy who's a football lifer. He wants to be involved in the game. I He's agree not. With that. I don't see him retiring and walking away and going fishing and. But I do you not know. see. I, I, the, I, I. Here's what I would bet on. I agree with you. I think he will eventually get to the booth at Fox. I would bet humongous amounts of money he will not do ten years at Fox. I yeah, that's fair. Seems I, inconceivable. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Now, I what happens if that. like let's just sort of scenario it out a little bit? What happens if Brady decides to retire two two years from now? Okay, so he plays another two years and then retires. Greg Olson and Burkhardt have become the number one team for three years. Do you make Brady the third person on that booth, or do you literally just kick Olsen to the number two team after being a, a number one analyst for three years? Like that's well, interesting. If Daryl Johnston's your number two guy, then yes, you kick Olsen to the number two <laughs> team. I mean, that's an easy call. Um, but you know what I'm saying, though. Like, what happens no, if Olsen establishes listen, himself as like is, somebody who's like a number one? No disrespect to Greg Olson. This has nothing to do with Greg Olson. If you have the greatest quarterback of all time who wants yeah. to be your number one analyst, then the greatest quarterback of all time is going to be your number one analyst. It's that simple. And that's, and now, that's he, may be, he may be terrible. He may fizzle out for you. Then they bring Olson back. Yep. But Fox is not – I mean – that decision is that decision's way above Fox Sports too, right? That's a Lachlan Murdoch, so it's going to happen. I agree with you on that. Listen, Tom could also say, like, listen, let me do it with a three man booth with Olsen in there, so it's not as yeah. much of me. You know, that could happen. I could see that happening. But I think that'd be smart on Brady's part because that's how you can sort of lean into the uh, lean into the assignment. I, I, you're right, but I just I despise three person booth yeah i listen i think brady loves football i have no doubt about that by the way i don't know if you know i know i have a lot of people like who write to the athletic he's like brady's gonna be horrible i'm like i don't know how brady's gonna be maybe he'd be good maybe he won't be you don't right. know right it well just seems, it just seems hard it seems hard for me to believe okay 49 year old tom brady okay week eight jacksonville <laughs> jets it just doesn't seem like that's what he wants to do with his time in 2029 maybe I I'm mean, he's going to be doing the best game every week so you're your scenario there is a little misguided. Okay. And I think, Fair why enough. not? Like, right. he has the whole week to do what he wants on you Friday. You don't think he wants to be in football ownership or have a massive production company and be like Peyton? I think he could do both. Maybe. Do you still watch um, the Manning cast? I was going to, I do not. I haven't watched the Manning cast for more than maybe five or 10 minutes the whole season. And I do, now see, the Manning cast to me is interesting in terms of, you know, there's all this talk about will Brady go to Fox? Will Brady ever go to Fox? Will Brady ever call a game? Um, I wonder if the Manning cast is going. Was it three or five years that deal? Uh, good question. What did because if it's five, I think it's I wonder five. If, I'll, I'll keep talking. I'll try to find that. If it's five, I don't know if that's going to keep. I mean, it does what it does. It's a nice play for ESPN. It gets some good publicity, good social media stuff. But I do feel like I don't know. In four years from now, it, I don't. I don't know. If Peyton and Eli, that's what they're going to want to be doing. I think the Manning cast itself is is agreed upon through 2023. And then, I, oh, so maybe, then they... maybe that Omaha deal goes beyond that. Here's what I would say. Like, I have watched the Manning cast, and I actually think it's a better production this year than last year. Like, I think the both Eli – certainly Eli has found himself. He sort of has a perfect presence on that show. I think Peyton's much more comfortable as the person who brings you in and out, you know, the traditional host role. Um Guest booking is what it is. You you may like someone, you may not like someone. But interesting enough, Jimmy, the viewership is down, which is something I expected. And I think for these alternative broadcasts, like once that first year kind of like, you know, sizzle and sexiness is gone, it's just I think it's hard to like make that thing like as like the Manicast is a fun watch, but it's no longer like revolutionary special. I agree. We've, we've seen it 15 times now. Right. That's right. my thought. I and I do think. I think it comes down to this. Like, do you want to watch a traditional broadcast or do you want to hear two people talking about a game? And I think a big factor in all this is the game. I think when there's a good game, a big game, you want the traditional broadcast. When there isn't, then yeah, I want to hear these two fun, funny guys speak. I do think the the guest thing for me is almost, you know, I haven't, I, I just, it's not like I'm purposely going out of my way not to watch it. It's just like, oh, it's eight o'clock. I put on ESPN 
and I never think to go to it because I'm just. Yeah. But you you're know, like ninety like percent Jones- of the audience. Like the right. all the viewers. Just look at. It. By the way, I should uh, but when I'm, when correct I'm, myself. It's twenty twenty four that Manning Cats goes through. But look at the viewership numbers, right? Even for this past week, the latest one we had, um, it was a bit of a dog viewership. So like uh, Monday Night Football drew like whatever it was, ten and a half million viewers, roughly like that. And Manning Cats drew like one point one. So literally, that's, that's nine, 90, 10. So like not, you're like ninety percent of the audience. You're always going to watch the main broadcast. I think a lot of the novelty of the manicast is worn off. And I do think I, th- there was, you know, they had, I just know on a Monday I'll scroll through Twitter, for example, and I see, oh, Bill Burr is going to be on. And I said to myself, oh, I, I want to, that I would want to watch. So then you wait on Twitter to someone say, oh, Bill Burr is on the manicast and you put it on. But like this week I'm, I see, you know, Dana White's on. I'm like, well, you couldn't pay me to put that on. So I do think the guest has some impact. Right. It was Dana, it was Robin Roberts, Dana White, and somebody else. Randy See, Moss. He, yeah, like Randy Moss isn't going to get me to watch that. I don't know if Dana White. Well, Robin Roberts could be interesting. She's never been on before, I think. But yeah, like I, I'm with you on that. Like if well, the thing is, you want I, the key. You got to have somebody who's like uh, like to me. Uh, somebody suggested this. I don't remember who it was. Might have been Austin Carp on my podcast. I think something interesting would be like I think he mentioned this. If Odell Beckham came on to announce where he was going to sign. Like, right. I thought that would be kind of an interesting idea. Or you go dangerous. What about Dave Chappelle on there? Yeah, I don't know if ESPN wants that uh, headache, but sure. No, I don't think Disney would do it. But I'm just saying, like, that could be interesting guest booking. But you're right. Like, it's – I think guest booking's tough after a certain point. Like, there's – how many people are really, like, destination guests? There's not many. Yeah. I, that's why I mean I think the best thing for them to do is current players. It's I, from what I, I remember last that. year, it was the current players. Whether it was Russell Wilson, whether it was Brady, Rogers, Josh Allen may have done it. Who yeah, got, I agree with you. Who got a lot of attention? Yep, because yeah, because they may say something and that's newsworthy because they're playing. I agree, hundred right, percent. Right. Um, what else did I want to get into with you? What do you make of the? So, like, here we are. We're, we're almost wrapped up with the NFL regular season. There was all this anarchy in the offseason with everyone switching Joe and Troy to ESPN and right. Burkhardt elevated. It, what, Like, all these months later, you think, oh, boy, that was a whole lot of hullabaloo for, like, nothing because there's not... I mean, I think the biggest thing that's come out of this is Al on Thursday nights and Thursday nights being a little bit rough with the schedule. But the other stuff, I think, was, you know... It all played out fine, and no one not well, it's not been like a big shocking change. No, in first and world. foremost, it made a lot of people rich, and so yes. you know that's really to me the takeaway. I mean, then Buck and Aikman, uh, and uh, you know Brady's salary eventually. So that's that's sort of you know the money. Alan exchange. Kirk got paid. Yeah, the money that sort of was handed over, I think, for people was very eye opening. Um, obviously, the biggest story, the big story, is just is viewer habit and like the shifts like you don't hear buck and aikman anymore in fox you hear them on monday night football and what does that mean well i think any of us who covered this like i feel like we had it right it didn't mean any more viewers or any less viewers it just like it's that subjective monday night football feels bigger do you agree it feels more like an event because of those two guys i did in the beginning i did in the beginning but you're never gonna think like week 13 feels big unless it's a big game like right. that's just the season. Right? They're at the mercy of the schedule. Now next year, when Monday night gets flex, I think that's good. and I 100%. I really need to find out how that's going to work because a lot of yeah. people want to know about it. Yeah, that's going to be enormous. I agree. That makes that's going to make some of those late season games feel big. Um, you know, I think Alice had a really good year. I I will say uh, Austin Carp and I think Chad Finn brought this up um, on my podcast as well. And then I started. F- paying a little more attention to it. They were pretty down on Herb Street as an NFL analyst. Not saying he's like terrible, but just that not he's a difference maker and not necessarily you're learning so much. And the more I watch, I I kind of tend to agree with them. I think Kirk is a good NFL analyst, but by no means um, revolutionary or transcendent. But Al feels like even if he occasionally makes a mistake, he still that that game still feels big because Al's on it, even if the game itself has like you know it's a dog game see i it's interesting what you say about kirk that's real because and it's different in college football by the way where i always feel like he does feel big in college football well that's i i was that's what i was gonna say is if you listen to kirk do thursday and then you listen to him do saturday i mean there's just a huge difference agreed i think i agree with you and i don't know if it's because it's tough to do the two different sports, the scheduling, the, you know, and, you know, he's w- working with Al. He's got a, 
I don't want to say, um, what's the word when you style are like gravitas? Al's the number one guy there. Yeah. Whereas he's the number one guy when he's with Fowler. Yeah. Like, don't you think some of it? Do you think some of it is the fact that when you watch him on Saturday, like that college game feels big? Like you know, it's like it, it's it's a game that has meaning mm. for that sport every week. Where no offense, like you know, Texans versus like Jets on Thursday night may not have meaning. I, you want to hear the truth? If I'm giving you the, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, yeah. The only way, I, the only time I feel that on Saturdays is CBS at three thirty with Nestle and Danielson, and not not necessarily because of them. They're a factor in it, but like that SEC game is usually the best game of the day. Oh, Fox's like, Fo- Fox early window though has had some big games. Or even Ohio State they've Michigan's had, the most watched game of the year. That's a Fox early right, window, right? And they've also showed Iowa and Indiana a few times. Right, right. Well, also so, you're like, you're a gambler though, so Thursday should matter to you for that, right? I'm going to watch Thursday. Listen, I think there was one Thursday where at halftime I started watching something else and I never went back to the game because it's a pain in the ass with the streaming. But if there's an NFL game on, uh, chances are I'm going to watch it, like even if it's bad teams. Yeah. Well, but again, if if you you have an interest in that, a betting interest in that, the game is interesting, even if teams are bad, right? So like that's that's sort of the – no, I, and I don't in, want to call a, it the genius, a, but that's the hook on gambling is that every right. single game in many ways matters, even if the game itself is terrible. And in a sick, warped way, like I'll watch the Bay game on Thursday night to hear what Al's going to do. I think like this Thursday is an awful, unwatchable game, right? Isn't it? Who do like, they have? Um, I got to check. I think it's like Rams. Hey, no, the Rams have just been terrible. Rams and another shitty team. They had the, their, their, their best game left is I think it's their last one. They have Cowboys Titans at the end and that's. I don't know how many other good well, games. Well, yeah, they have, I mean, if you that. get the Cowboys, you're in good shape. Yep. The Cowboys with the ratings is just, it's just, well, they're good, right? And that has value. Um, and when the, you know, for that Thanksgiving day, because the Giants were good at that time, that's where you, that's when you put up a $40 million, 40 million right. viewership mark. So this week, Al has the five and seven Raiders against the three and nine Rams. I mean, it's an awful, it awful is. Game. Although you know what, at the beginning of the year, you would have said that's a really good game because you would have thought both those teams might have been good. So that's right. that's just bad luck for Amazon. Next week they have Niners Seahawks, which is good. Yeah, that's even not even bad. without Garoppolo, it's yeah, still good. Then they have yeah, Jag- well, Niners are interesting. Then they have Jaguars Jets. Um, the Jets should still have a playoff sp- uh, potential there. And then after that, they've got Cowboys Titans, which you mentioned. Yeah. So the final game. Their final game may end up being their best game of the year. I uh, know they had Chiefs charges at the beginning, but that Cowboys Titans game could have significance for both teams, and you have the Cowboys. Yeah, and, and um, but if you're, so this I week mean, it's let me Raiders ask you, Rams. I'm going to watch to hear what Al does. So let me ask you this, and I'll bet it. Know, yeah, and let's not you know. I'm asking everybody in Amazon, the Tim Buckmans and Alana Roosters of the world. Don't be don't be emailing Trina uh, to, to annoy him on this, but. How do, do you feel like Amazon has been successful this year? The viewership numbers are going to be under um, what the ad promise was, but everybody's numbers are usually under what the ad promise is. Um, I think they're successful just because the production has looked really good. They've gotten awareness of the product. And to me, that that's in itself a success. Is it like you know 25 million people watching it? No, of course not, but it's year one. So I would say they're more success. They're, they're, let's put it this way. They're more – if it was like a political race, I would say lean success, closer to toss up. I wouldn't say. I, likely, I mean, I listen. I think success. you're not going to like this answer, but I think it depends on how you. I mean, what you consider successful. I I would lean no for this reason. Okay. You have the hottest product, the only product that generates massive ratings in television. Like network television is dead. Nothing gets anything close to what the NFL gets. Right. Okay. 40 million people watching on Thanksgiving. When you have games getting eight, nine million viewers for the NFL, even if you're just a streaming service in year one, I mean, NFL Network on Sunday at nine o'clock in the morning gets like five million for those games. Yeah, for the nine o'clock in the morning on a, you know. But Jimmy, you're not, you're not, the, the Amazon games are not so far away from the early window of a okay game on CBS or Fox, right? That's not it's true. Like, that may, No, no. I'm not talking about a good game. Those games could do 13, 14, 15 million, and Amazon is doing 10, 11 million. Right. I think, what so hurts Am- I think what has hurt Amazon is the schedule. Yeah, you can't control that. I mean, like, right. you know, you, you get what you get. 
I'm right, just, so that's why I, I say when I, 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 I judge I mean, it as like they're they they to me failure would have been people watch that and you're like this is not an NFL broadcast this is a joke I'm not watching the streaming's not working yeah. latency's not working that's uh, a terrible take by you because the NFL wouldn't have allowed that the NFL is not going to allow them to put on a wait, sub- I, the NFL's not uh, NFL is not the one in the production truck making sure this happens those are the real NFL people. wouldn't let NBC Amazon. use the NFL wouldn't let Tarico use NBC on Sunday nights to fill in for Al when the, when they wanted to do that because they want like I'm just saying the, that I, the NFL I, I is Amazon, involved. I, you're foolish if you th- ultimately you got to put an NFL quality product on and Amazon has done that. I think the schedule is the biggest factor and that's not Amazon's fault. That's why I don't even want, I I don't even like saying it's I would I lean unsuccessful but it's not even their fault. What are they supposed to do this Thursday when it's the Raiders against the Rams? I mean the I Raiders agree. Are, I mean the Raiders are the Rams are the like. Nobody in this country cares about the Rams. Like they won a Super Bowl last year. It was the most unfun, un. It's a weird. Like nobody... L- yeah, even LA is just a weird NFL market. And then they show those games in LA, and the crowd's rooting for the road team in every I know. game. It's I know. Just a bad, I, I don't know it's... what you do. You you try to There's, hype it. There is something to like. You put on a game, and it's Lambeau Field, or it's Orchard Park, Orchard Park. Yeah. Or you get you know the Bears even are terrible. No, but it's it's, yeah, it doesn't feel the like Rams football. are a nothing. What uh, do you? What is your thought on Amazon's pregame, postgame group? Like, dislike, neutral? I would like to see a pregame show where there's like two people, maybe three times. I, I don't. Th- when you when Tony, I see the panel yeah, and I'm, it's eighty seven people, I'm like, Gonzalez what are, what are we there? doing? What are yeah. we doing? What are we doing? And I thought this is what I mean about the NFL being involved. I thought with Amazon streaming new new company that is that leans all towards young people. I thought we'd see a different pregame show. That pregame show is the same one that's on CBS and Fox and NBC. It's the same exact yeah, thing. Such a, well, they would say Panel you of know, 50 people doing the same topics. Yeah, Sherman and uh, um, Fitzpatrick are different, but they're really not. If you think about it, they're just former no. players, right? Who sort right. of assert doing the same stuff. Well, yeah. th- I guess Amazon's point, I haven't watched much of it where they would be like, well, dude, perfect is different. Like these alternative things that we're doing are different, okay, but I, I haven't watched much break, of it. So, please. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Tell, I can't tell you about it. Uh, listen, the the NF. I don't know if it's the NFL, if it's the networks, but their whole thing is ex players, ex players, ex players. I'd rather see someone who's not an ex player. Like I, I agree. It's this, unless you know there are obviously there are some ex players who are really really great analysts, but we always get the same archetype, and it would be great to sort of have a different voice, a new voice a woman, uh, someone like you said, who just like maybe is from another field who just happens to be an interesting NFL voice. I'm with you, but you know this from, from writing about this stuff too. So much of sports television, Jimmy's copycat, right? They just, of course. They, people are afraid to challenge conventional wisdom or conventionality because they think that's the way to keep their jobs. And so I also don't think, I don't yeah. think the NFL and the networks, I don't think they want to go outside the box too much. Well, when it comes to game broadcast, the NFL almost has to de facto sign off. You, in theory, the ESPNs, the Foxes, the NFL networks, uh, not NFL networks, uh, Amazon should have more say over who they hire for their pregame. But I have no doubt that if, like, I mean, <laughs> you know, this is not going to happen. But if Amazon said, hey, we want to put OJ on our panel, I am sure the NFL would be like, that's not going to happen. Guys. What an example, Richard. We can't end the podcast on that horrific, horrific note. That's just, yeah, I do think the NFL would nix OJ. Call me shocked. And yeah, yeah I mean, that's just a bad example. OJ, by the way, should be, in my opinion, should be off the Bills wall of fame and should be out of the Hall of Fame. Stupid Hall oh, of Fame is made up by human another beings. Another terrible take. Yeah. I don't, care what terrible he did during, I don't care what he did during his playing career. Why do you kill two people? Put them out, kill them, take them out of the Hall about, of Fame. Why do you care about trophies and museums? They're meaningless. Right. They're That's my point. They're meaningless. So take right, so it you out. Th- Although no, I will no, no. say I was very happy. To, I know it's a different topic. I like seeing Fred McGriff get in there. I thought that was cool. I like Me Fred too. What, let me ask you something. If you take OJ out of the Hall of Fame, what does that do right. exactly? What does that accomplish? It just makes me happy for five minutes. Okay. Well, that, that is a good answer at least. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't I mean, accomplish anything else. How That's can it. you take any hall? I, how do you take these Hall of Fame seriously? You shouldn't Jimmy, think one museums second. Museums are it. made by human beings. They're, they're not some like human beings are awful. That's like magical and mystical. Like they're they're rules. People make rules up all the time. Listen. The Hall of Fame committees change. Also, you know, when I think about the NFL, <laughs> that, that their vote should be public. Let us know who you voted for, NFL writers. Make that transparent. 
Don't get worked up about the Hall of Fame. It's no, not I, worth I just, it. I'm doing shtick here. I don't care about it. Is there any sports media person you'd like to shout out before we say goodbye? Is there anyone who has impressed you this year? College, football, NFL. Anyway, you say, you know what? That person doesn't get enough credit. They, you know, maybe an Andrew Catalan, maybe a... Uh, well, I think McAfee's had an incredible career, but he gets enough credit. Oh, yeah, he so gets I no just, credit at all, Richard. Yeah. Way to play the game. So, so, okay. yeah. No, let me think about this. Someone no one ever talks uh, about Pat McAfee. No, no, totally no, no, under the radar. Oh, no, I get it. You're trying to go sort of for someone who's... Uh, Sort of a little under the radar who's done uh, great work. RG3 on college football. A lot of people like good, him. good, but I feel like he's gotten a lot of credit too. You know, is that a really good year? Like sort of a That's maybe, what I'm asking you. Yeah, okay. I'll, t- I'll give you somebody. Uh, pretty much every piece that she's been a part of has been pretty strong. Jen Lotta of ESPN has done really good work. Some high-profile assignments. Um and, you know, for College Game Day and other places, um, and probably, you know, sh- should get more of a of a uh, of a shout out. But there's, you know, you, you're putting me on the spot. If I sort of yeah. have to really think about yeah. it, there's there right, there, so yeah, there's a, there. I I, it's good to, you know, it's um, what was I going to say? You know, kudos for me and you are great. What I always hope for all these people is just that they're fairly compensated. That's the honestly the what matters all at right. the end of the day. Forget that. Let's let's end with this. Where where do you stand with Skip Bayless these days? I really don't think much about him, honestly. I, I'm being very very honest. You know, I do you do I stopped, you think you I stopped the I stopped the Twitter shtick. It's now four <laughs> years ago. I stopped it. Right? Will you ever tweet out his ratings? Will you ever tweet out his ratings ever again? No, I, I might I, maybe one okay. day. I don't know if I'm bored. Okay. But I I think you, someone like you and I think many many others understood that when I tweeted that it I, I of course understood. That television, cartoons, and kid television shows will always beat any kind of sports debate show in the afternoon. Like that was never the point. The point was to sort of embarrass Fox executives who put this knucklehead on the air by sort of pointing out that this is all nonsense and all irrelevant because Paw Patrol can kick the shit out of your Bayless thing. I will say this I'll be very, very um, transparent and honest here. Undisputed ended up getting more viewers than I thought they would. That that show has been successful for Fox within that universe. I would never um, doubt that. And that does tell you that there is an audience for what Bayless does. Now, in the football season, it will always do better. You know, whatever it is, 200, 250,000 uh, 250, viewers. In the off season, it'll crunch down to 100,000. These are very small numbers, Jimmy, as both you and I know. But within that universe – you know, that's considered successful if you can get to a quarter million, 300,000 viewers for a uh, for a morning show. It so, um, it turns out I'm just my here's my just my last point. This obviously I haven't talked about this in a long, long time. I think what's still, I guess, kind of interesting, Jimmy, and I wonder how you feel about this, is that you would think that the kind of hack like over the top contrarian heel character bullshit would have been played out, but it still hasn't been played out, right? People still watch all this stuff. I think it's stronger than ever. Yeah. No, you're true. Exactly. Why do you think that is? You think people People just like debates? People People are are dumb. dumb. Okay. People are dumb. Um, Speaking of dumb people, you were off Twitter from, I believe, February of this year to September of this year. You were probably following it. Absolutely. I was waiting. By the way, I remember working with you. You're like, you'll never quit. I agree. So you, I was you, wrong. You acknowledge now you're wrong, correct? I was 100% wrong. Thank you. So so you were off from February to September. Yeah. What is it like being back? What have you learned? What are we doing differently? It Give sucks me a little being back on. Um no, and all I'm be very transparent and candid with the audience. I'm only on to promote stuff. I'm only on to try to get more subscriptions and page views. It's just a promotional vehicle for me occasionally. I'll what a out whore. Some stuff that's yeah, I'm just being honest. Like it's I have no the affinity that I used to have for it is gone, which I think is really healthy. Um, I think it used to be. Would you call it an addiction? Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. But Absolutely. yeah, but but it, that that at least is gone. I still find it to be an incredibly valuable service because all the writers and reporters I like come into my inbox. That's really really great, and I have you know it's great to read great work from much smarter people than me. Um, I'm going I, the, le- right the one now. thing I've learned, Jimmy, but I think I learned this. Maybe a little bit in the post Rovell universe is that um, I, I can only speak for me. I, even when I would get into nonsense with people, I never felt good afterwards. Even if people were saying, "Oh, you 
won that fight or, oh, you were totally right. And so the only way I feel like to – it's almost like the that Matthew Broderick old movie war games. Like the only way to win is not to play. Like you can never win in those situations. You're only just creating entertainment, right, and content for others. Right. So I hope that's – if I've learned anything, I hope it's to sort of not fall for the – the trap of engagement, but I'm sure I'll break that. I, I'm sure I'll make a, I'm sure I will do something stupid and hopefully it's not fireable. Um, I do hope I don't, by the way, I don't think any, I think Twitter will continue. I don't think it's going to fold under Musk or anything like that. Oh God. I do hope though, that there is an alternative to it. Do you think that we should end it on that? Do you think there will, and, and I'm talking about sports here because that's me and you sort of, I think care about that most. Can there be any kind of alternative to sports Twitter? Like, do you think nope. that will, no, new, right. That's new. the problem. Is no we're one's going to We're all that. in. We're all in too deep. Yeah, I agree. The ship has sailed. Yeah, I agree. I, unfortunately, I agree. So, even though I'd be willing to go to some other places, and maybe I will, I don't think I, sports Twitter I, can be duplicated anywhere else. I will say that day on Twitter when people acted like it was going out of business it was <laughs> one of the most imba- the cringe and the douche and the just oh. My work will be here. And oh, if this is our last day together, like w- these people thought this, like they were going to hit the app button on their phone. And it was going to be gone like the next well, day. Like, I, it's you just not how business I works. Th- I, th- I don't think this is, I, I think it's actually a smart idea to join some of these other services to see if they get big. But yes, I think the idea that the performing was just it's a, it's, so it's, ridiculous. It was all performance. The, 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 the infrastructure of that company is so deep, it's inconceivable to think it would like blow up. Like in a couple months now, if you're asking me what it is in 2028, I don't know. I would guess Musk isn't going to own it five years from now. It's just a pure guess on my part. But I think well, if the infrastructure the is so great, it's not going to fold. I mean, doesn't like uh, does MySpace still exist? Like, does it literally exist or no? I don't know. But here's why I think this conversation. But you why know my I think, point, right? Like, like why it's like, a stupid block, point. I'll tell you why. Blockbuster didn't go out of business 20 years after people thought it was done. Right. But here's my point about this. Right. Since the day Elon Musk took over Twitter, has anything on Twitter been even slightly different for you? No. Everyone goes uh, on the yeah, other day. Yes. I, I w- honestly, I, I do feel like I see more, um, at least in mentions and stuff, some really awful, shitty people. Um, oh, because they weren't there before he bought Twitter. No, they, it seems like that's heightened, but no, correct. It's not new. Um, like you post again, your stuff, I, you read who you follow. And right. that's but, it. but Jimmy, like, me and you, me, me you got to remember, like, what is it like for people who are like reporting on Musk, or what is it like for people who write about like uh, Nazis and Nick Fuentes and stuff? That, you, that's where it'd be it was, interesting to see, like, how horrible are those feeds? I don't think, but me those and you feeds were, were horrible a, beforehand. Me and you are not getting a reaction, Jimmy. If we're like, oh, Dak Prescott had a nice game here, like, no one's, you know, the dimensions are still going to be the same. And the mentions were going to be the same for those people before Musk too. I'm not sure about that. I feel I think oh. those people are are getting it worse personally. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. It's a good, you know, it's a larger topic. Do, by the way, is Sal Licata going to be part of this podcast or just me? Absolutely, every week. Yeah, he's every very week. popular for you. I read, I read the uh, feedback that you get on like uh, iTunes and stuff when people rate, rate and review. Uh, You're still what? stalking me, even all these years later. After we've I'm stalking you, I mean, it's uh, I, that podcast has meaning to me. I was there long before you, there, Junior. Um, At some point, you got to get over it. No, no chance. Uh, I'll get over I, it. If I you know give, me, give me, give me the IP. Give me, give. I want my subscribers. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. You have to get over it. It's no, been I'm over. I'm five over. years. No, let me let me get back to Sal though. The um, a lot of the comments on that are about Sal. They really like him. I, I would say he's he's huh? he's fifty percent of the comments that you get. I, it's like Jimmy, great job on the podcast. Like your take on X. Love Sal and the conversations you have. It's a lot of that. Yeah, that's why I wanted him to be part of the podcast. I actually know what I'm doing. It seems like he has a big following. It makes me think I should have like my own Sal. Oh, he's on TV and on WFAN. Like I understand people. You know, radio's dead. Radio's dead. Blah blah blah. Not FAN WFAN. is still a big is a big yeah. deal in New York. Exactly. That's that's so. that's it's still a giant. Well, there you're smart on that. Who else are you going to get on? John Jastrzemski or somebody like that? Mm-hmm. No. All right. Just Sal. Okay. All right, listen, um, I've enjoyed this. This wasn't, you know, this was. A, this seems like a pleasant conversation. Give all, give all your plugs. Tell everyone where they can find you. Do it properly. Uh, no plugs. Whatever. Sports Media Podcast. Uh, if you're listening to Jimmy, um, I feel like this would be a companion for you in the same way that if you listen to me, 
I feel like uh, Trainers Podcast would be a companion to that. That was good. After you said you weren't going to plug, that was good. Oh, that's it. And no, no. you don't want to mention the athletic. Eh. Okay. Well, let's yeah. pull that. I, I mean, listen. Love the people I work with. Incredibly talented. I find that my stuff is incredibly mediocre right now, so I'm not sure I'd recommend it. Fair enough. We'll end it on that. Richard, okay. appreciate you coming on. Be well. Thank you, Jimmy. And we'll Be talk well. To you soon. Happy All holidays right. to your to you, yours, and your listeners. Same to you. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. Joining me now for our weekly train of thoughts segment from WFAN Radio in New York, SNY TV, Sal Akata. Sal, how are you? I'm okay. Busy week with the winter meetings, but okay. As a, as a diehard Mets fan, are you happy with Verlander over DeGrom? Or no? I'm, I'm bothered by the way – look, I know DeGrom didn't want to be here. I've known that for a long time. But it just – the reality of it sucks when he's going to get uh, – well, today's Wednesday, right? He'll get introduced yeah. tomorrow for – as you know, we taped this on Wednesday. He'll get introduced tomorrow as a Ranger. It sucks. Yeah, I like Verlander's replacement. I, I think that's the best move they could have made. But it sucks losing DeGrom. Yeah, you always want to keep the homegrown guys, I think. I mean, that's how I feel. So. Like your Yankees with Aaron Judge. Right, exactly. Can you we want talk to keep about Don Heyman? <laughs> I did I did with I had Deitch on the pod this week and we we did a lot of John Heyman. I'm I'm John Heyman out. I really yeah. you know. I did see someone whatever. Yeah, I don't want to even get mm-hmm. into it. Um Well, you know he blocked me on Twitter a long time ago, right? I, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Yeah, You're I mean, blind. I know him personally. He, he's got sensitive to something I said. Anyway, it's good to see him uh, take one on the chin here. But anyway, we we got to do a um, <laughs> one of the one of these weeks. We got to do a list of who's blocked you on Twitter. <laughs> That's what we got. Has, Maybe. It, has anybody blocked you? I've got. I definitely have a list. I'm blocked by Chad Johnson <laughs> and Tori Wilson. What did you do to get blocked by Tori Wilson? I when she dated a Rod, I think I said something ah, derogatory. Oh. Yeah. I should have known that. Okay, those are the only two I know about. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's not a bad episode, though. <laughs> but uh, you're way more aggressive than me on Twitter, so you have a long list. I guess. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we're taping this. It's almost seven o'clock on Wednesday night. About two hours ago, sitting on my couch, doing nothing, waiting for this to come, and my phone rings. And I look, and the name on the phone is John Sterling. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Calling to thank me for writing nice things about him throughout the year. Wow. Merry Christmas. I love the old school. Like he phone, he picks up the phone, he calls. He he, he had a line. You know, I don't even know if I should be saying this. It was probably a phone call, but he said something about thanking me. He goes, because, you know, the newspapers. Usually you're not too kind to me. But I think it's really just, you know, mushnick who rips him. But it was nice to hear from John. So You know, I told you this story. I don't know if we shared it on the pod or not. But yeah. years ago, I, I texted him to try to get him on as a guest. I was doing this Yankee pregame show. He calls back right away and chastised. So why would you? Why would you text? Just pick up the phone and call. And he goes on for 15 minutes chastising me about how I shouldn't text and call. And I was like, oh, my God, it's John Sterling. So, yeah. I why it. are you texting an 80-year-old? It's Yeah. I mean, you're out of line for that. This was six years ago. Because I feel yeah. awkward calling people cold like that. Who does that? The generation above ours. Yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. You know, you got to, you know, with the technology. Did you re- did you by any chance read the Andrew Luck story that was on ESPN on Tuesday that everyone's going gaga over? No, I just saw the headline. Oh, all right. I read it and like <laughs> there's a thing in there about how this is this is what stuck out of everything that was in there. What stuck with me is they said that Andrew Luck used to have this thing where he would he was, I guess, so crazy or whatever. He would order for people in restaurants. Hmm. And like there's a story in there where he took someone and he told the person like they're getting a margarita. Who would hang out with someone like that? Am I at, like I would kill like I would be like who what? Yeah, I wonder where he picked that up from. That's annoying. It was bizarre, but like, I don't know. I want to talk about this with people, but no one's... Not, everyone on Twitter read dates. the article and no one I know read the article. I could care less about Andrew Luck at this point, but it wasn't on dates. It was about like it, like if you and I were to go out, you're ordering... It might have been on dates too. It might, but, either, but even so, I mean, I think it's worse to even do it on a date. Right. Well, I mean, I, I agree with that, but at least like I've heard of that being done before. A guy is <laughs> foolishly 
desperately trying to be impressive, but he doesn't. But if I'm yeah. going out to dinner with a friend of mine, and he starts ordering from him. I'm like, hey, what the hell are you doing here? As he, should the date. But he would order for like the entire table. They said like it was. Oh. It's bizarre. Yeah. yeah. So don't pull that with me. Um, <laughs> all right. There, there wasn't a ton going on this week, so I want to read some reviews that we've got. We got, I think, four or five here, and uh, people always like to hear the reviews. So we'll we'll go through these quickly and uh, wrap it up. So. This person only left four out of five stars. So here's the review. This is from I Am Maker. This is an excellent listen for anyone interested in media and sports. Right, so how am I getting four stars out of this? Right. Jimmy's takes on most things is spot on and funny. He gets good answers and great guests, all of which makes this a must listen. This would be a five-star rating except for two things. There needs to be some more guests with the big names like Al Michaels, Joe Buck, and Jim Nance are great. While the big names like Al Buck and Nance are great, they've told the same stories and have similar thoughts on things. Hearing from other national people would help the pod. Also, Jimmy's take on refs being atrocious is atrocious. They get it right almost all the time, have an incredibly hard job, and just because you gamble mediocre games, including mediocre players, and a ref misses a call doesn't make them bad, a good new guest would be one of the referee analysts from the network. Right, let me address. There's a lot. Yeah, who, who, who's that from? Gene Steratore? Yeah. I mean, come on. Let me explain. First of all, I think the rules officials, or whatever they're called in these broadcasts, are this, the most overrated thing in the history of sports broadcasting. They're completely <laughs> not necessary. If you want to have one of them there to explain a rule that people may not know, that's fine. But most of the time, you know, there's a fumble and they bring the guy on to say whether the guy fumbled. I could see it with my own eyes. I don't need the ref. So you're barking up the wrong podcast. If you want to hear Mike Pereira here, I, I'm not into the, I, I don't understand. Like to me, it's, they are so not necessary to broadcast. Um, the refs are atrocious. Even if I'm betting mediocre games at mediocre player, that's an accurate, accurate statement. But the refs still have to be good in those games. Has anybody so, ever defended the refs before? I mean, that is crazy. Sometimes just Mike Green, of course, but I mean, that right. is crazy. I'm just nervous this guy's going to write again and not give me three stars. But And also, like, it's the NFL season, and we're coming to a head here. I booked a pod by myself. I get, Al, I get Nance, Buck, Burkhart, and Tariko on, and this guy's complaining. Really? Well, have you ever, I mean, look, I get why you have those guys on. They're the biggest names. I mean, are you interested in getting on unknown names and giving well, them a platform? Is that something? That I don't is- mind mixing it up, but I'm still going to want the top people from every sport on. You know, right. Joe Davis was on during the baseball season. Right. You know, Van Gundy has been on. But, you know, like. What about what about local guys? Like, we talked about that guy, Paul Allen, for the Vikings, who had that. Yeah. Moment. I mean, yeah, that's, I think you got to strike that though right at the right time. Like, he would have been good that week. For sure. Right. But you got to strike that to at do. the right time. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. The card says Moops. Good, good Apple username says, Yes, I made a podcast is squarely in my rotation of must listen podcast. Solid list of guests. And I love Jimmy's personality and him constantly complaining about streaming services and opinion, <laughs> which I share. There's basically nothing wrong with this podcast, except I could use more of Sal oh. complaining about his family. That stuff is gold, Jerry, gold. Separate but related comment. My only complaint is with train of thoughts. Typos like Jim Nance, N-A-N-C-E, is is a man of his word, are all too common. You need to fire your editor if you have one. You would think a professional website like SI.com would be better. Listen, I write that column so fast, I make a lot of typos, and it's not my editor's fault if they miss them every now and then. And I don't think that Nance thing is accurate. There's no way I spelled his name wrong. But let's get back to what really matters. Yeah, this guy would like to hear you complain more about your family on this podcast. I would prevent that because I, it's already gotten tr- Sal in trouble in the past. But what, you, what do you think? You're, you're going to love this quick story. Friday night, I do my show. I'm done at 6.30. My wife, who desperately needs a night out, does her makeup, does her hair, meets me in the city for her. Well, I get my brother-in-law's wife's 40th birthday. My, my wife's brother's wife's 40th birthday. No issues. Takes the subway, takes the train in. Looks great. We go there having the guac and chips before we get started. It's about 8.15. I get the text to Grom left for the Rangers. Oh, SNY. I, I reached out to the producers cause I just left. I happened to be two subway stops away 
I said, hey, you, do you need me to come back? They said, yes, get here as soon as you can. I said, honey, I have to go. DeGrom has left the Mets. All right, but So just for people listening, I just wanted, so, so, for, so as I always say at the top, Sal works for SNY TV in New York. SNY here in New York, for those around the country who don't know, is the Mets cable station. And yeah. Sal hosts a show every night at 6 p.m. on that station, Baseball Night in New York. So as the host of that show... Jacob DeGrom is leaving. You get the text because you they're going to cut in live and you need to be on the air while well, you're at the dinner. Well, I got the text of the news. Right. I knew I was nearby. I knew that I've been working for weeks waiting for something to happen. As soon as I get off the air, basically on Friday night, it happens. I needed a piece of it. So I texted the producers saying, do you want me to come back? They said, yes, get over here. We did. A right. break they would have texted show. you if you didn't text them, probably. I don't know, but. I will admit, and if you're listening to this and know my wife or her family, shut your mouth. I told my wife that they reached out to me. And then I'm sitting there on set at I'm sitting there on set at 930 at night, an hour and a half after I left the party. And she's texting me saying, tell those producers I am pissed off. You were going to get in so much trouble. Yeah, I cannot believe you just told no, that story. No, I did. But, I did go back to the party. All is well. All is good. I needed to be a part. It was a big deal. The breaking news. Well, show. this is what I want. Did, when you explain what was going on to your wife, did she grasp the enormity of the situation of Jacob Degrom leaving the Mets and why you would have to run back to the station as as best she could? But ultimately, it was. I am here by myself. Where the hell are you? Because I was I will, gone for two hours. I will say this, and you know me, I would take the first chance to criticize or, or knock your situation or, you know, but I have to say, I give you credit. The fact that you would go back to the party with your wife and your in-laws and then enjoy the rest of the night, I give you credit for that. You could have easily worked your way out of that. I mean, oh, I listen, we, we, we're doing a couple of live hits. I'm not right. going to be able to make it, you know? Yeah. Well, I think I deserve credit twice. A, for wanting to go back to work. Uh, I mean, that was a Friday night. I'm, oh, I mean, I'm done for the week. I got the two jobs. The overnights are killing me. I'm out. I could be going to have drinks and whatever. I, I didn't do it. I wanted to be on the air for that. Right. And then, yes, you're right. I did go back and mingled and we hung out for another couple hours. Ended up being a good night. But in that, in that moment, I chose DeGrom and the breaking news over that family party. <laughs> I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, you want credit. You don't get credit. You wanted to be on the air, so you went on the air. All right. A couple of, just two more of these. This one's very quick, Buckeye for Life. Very impressive interviews with great guys. Jimmy and Sal are hilarious with thoughtful discussions and banter. Very nice. All right, the last one here. So when I had Tariko on last week, we talked about the red zone and how much I dislike the red zone, and you don't like it either. Right. I don't think it was you. I don't think you and I had touched on it. I had talked about it with Tariko, and I will give credit. Someone who works for Red Zone left a review on the pod, gave five stars. So this is, and he said, Jimmy, sad to learn you don't like watching NFL Red Zone or late field goals in three possession games. FYI, there were no Panther field goal attempts against the Bengals in week nine. I'll get to that. I will, however, make sure not to sell any extra points to Scott Hansen in non-competitive games. If you abstain from all future wrestling conversation or any topic related to wrestling in any way, shape or form, love the podcast and train of thoughts with Sal. So a couple of things I had said in my diatribe against Red Zone that when the Bengals, remember a few weeks ago, the Bengals beat the Panthers like 78,000 to 12 Right. Late in the fourth quarter, Red Zone's cutting to a field goal in that game. I was wrong. I looked it up. With a minute and a half left and the score 42-14, they cut to a Panthers touchdown. Oh, okay. That Don't Close need to enough. see it. Yeah. What I did get wrong is I think last week I had said uh, in the crazy Jaguars comeback against the Ravens two weeks ago that they hadn't showed how the Jaguars made it late in the game to get that field goal. I, apparently they did show that. So I think I got that part wrong, but it's very nice. He left five stars. He loves the pod. The red zone is not for everybody. We well, don't like it. People have see, to just understand. Yeah. Right. I think that's the point here. This is not about, at least from my perspective, you, you and I have talked about this for years, a very long time off the air, off the pod, whatever. It's not about the red zone being a crappy product. It's not about them doing a bad job or what they cut. Right. to. It's that I want to be right. in control of what I'm watching. That's it. Right. End of story. This is not a knock on the red zone. It's if I could have every game at my disposal, why wouldn't I want that? 
in, in right. replace of somebody that's going to create a channel that can take me wherever they want to take me. No, I want to be in control. That's it. End of story. Not a right. knock on Hanson or the Red Zone. It's that I want the games that I want to watch and when I want to watch. Right. The Red Zone motto is every score from every game. Well, I don't want to see every score from every game. Me. Now, I understand the fantasy people out there do. And I understand that that's the service you're providing. Your channel is not for me. And unfortunately, because of my situation where I don't have direct TV and I don't have Sunday ticket, I am forced every now and again to watch the red zone and I don't enjoy it. And I'm allowed. Sorry. But listen, again, I would be an idiot if I um, said the red zone wasn't enormously popular and successful. It is. It's just not my bag. Right. And Plain we are and clearly in the minority and we're clearly in the minority. In but yeah. I, I don't care. I still I prefer it. That right. One. All right, Sal, go uh, <laughs> go do your baseball duties. You're on you're on call here, and uh, yeah. we will. You have any plans with the wife this weekend? Uh, here, here's another quickie. This was supposed to be our weekend to decorate, get the oh, tree, yeah. all this stuff. My good friend who listens to the pod, an avid listener of this pod, Wink in Milwaukee, wanna- Stephen Winklemeyer. Yeah. He, who you've met, you've met plenty of times. His grandmother passed away. He's coming home from Milwaukee. Needs to stay with me Friday, Saturday, Sunday. See, I, you I, you ruined it because I if the guy's grandmother passed away, I can't sit here and now make jokes about. Well, what's going three on. nights is a three nights is a lot. And he even said like, look, if I'm gonna put you out, and I was like, no, no, it's all right. He's my friend. Like, yeah, but, uh, but, but why can't you? But why can't you guys decorate the tree and decorate and do Christmas stuff even if your buddy's staying with you? We we will, but. I mean, you know, a Saturday night where it's supposed to be me and my wife, the baby to sleep, and we're watching a movie. He got my buddy Wink sitting there on the couch with us. <laughs> and then Sunday, Sunday's football, we turn that into a Sunday football day. Here's I mean, what, you know how it goes. Here's what you need to tell your wife. This is what you need to tell your <laughs> wife. It's December 7th, December, January. She's going to divorce months, me. I know two it. months. She's just got to make it two more months. That's it. In football, it will be over in two months. Yeah. Well, now, I mean, but I was gonna say you get <laughs> now you get Saturdays back, but you never really watch college, so you you know the Saturdays you like for me. I love that Saturdays now are free again because college football's right. over except for the bowl games. But right. um, right. you have you, a whole day now to yourself, right? <laughs> tell you tell you two more months football's over, so then you know, hopefully, right? I know I gotta I, do well at Christmas time, and her birthday is the nineteenth of December. Christmas obviously follows. This is a rough stretch for me. Real tree or fake tree? Real tree, come on! What yeah. do you think I am? Just, yeah, I know, I know. But some people are a disgrace, and they get the fake. Did you get yours yet? No. Not okay, yet. so probably it, this weekend. It, yeah, is it too early this weekend or no? This is the right. No, time? not at all. No, okay. I think this is the right. This is. The right. I like having the tree up for the bowl games and the playoffs and that late right. the Saturday NFL games. Get the nice lights. It's very relaxing, <laughs> very peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, fit, real tree always. God, I'm I'm terrified to see what they cost with the inflation that's going on on everything. Uh, it's got to be at least a hundred bucks. I would yeah, think, like right? for the sh- yeah, I, like I get a small shitty tree and like I usually pay sixty seventy. Yeah. I don't want a big monster tree. It's too much. So I get like a nice, I get a nice one, but like six. I usually go six foot, six seven foot. Right, and those are usually about- like sixty seventy. So I'm, I'm terrified to see what they cost this year. And they've gone up, and then the tip. Yeah, you're talking about hundred, potentially mm-hmm. hundred twenty, maybe more, depending on the size that you get. So it's wild. Yeah, exactly. All right, Sal. Be well. All right, we'll, we'll see you next we'll week. We'll see you next week. All right. All right. My thanks to Richard Deitch and Sal Licata for doing the pod this week. If you've missed any recent episodes, dip into the archives and check them out. Subscribe to the SI Media Podcast. Leave a review. Recent guests include Mike Tirico, Kevin Burkhart, Joe Buck, Kevin Clark, Jim Nance, Chris Russo, Dan Lebetard. Listen to those pods if you haven't yet. Download, subscribe, rate, leave a review on Apple. We'll read it in an upcoming Train of Thought segment. All right. We'll see you next week right here on the SI Media Podcast. Stay safe and take care.